what's up y'all it's just Rhonda. we down in the valley season one episode two like the video subscribe to my channel like the video subscribe to my channel one more time like the video and subscribe to my channel we down in the valley with nico this week where we at Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Baton Rouge, Louisiana has a black population of 52%. That's a big number. For me, that's a big number. In Orlando, where I, you know, I'm like not inside the city of Orlando, but Orlando is 25%. And in my particular city of Kissimmee, it's only 8%. So I'm not surrounded by a lot of black folks. I'm surrounded by a lot of brown folks. And that's a different conversation for a different time. Anyway, Nico coming through Baton Rouge to discuss the delicate um, space. He had to discuss the delicate space between sex and God. The big G, O D, down here. Um, we're going to spotlight Sharonda Parker um, over here in Baton Rouge. Sharonda is known as the nasty lady. And she was like driving through town with her titties out. So maybe that's why they call her the nasty lady. But I think it, you know, obviously is a little bit deeper than that. She owns a sex store. Her store was called Private Parts Gift Shop over there in Baton Rouge. And uh, Sharonda's into the entire culture that is sex. She's into the strip strippers and the strip parties and the sex toy parties and the whole lifestyle that is sex. She's also a woman of God. And I guess I can see where that would be very confusing. That's why I like these types of stories because Sharonda is molded by her surroundings over there in the southern state of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Louisiana, a lot of religion-based type situation. It's the deep, deep south. I live in Florida, but it's something different. And I was born in Michigan, so I was built on something different. And I was seasoned in Atlanta, so I'm giving you something different. I, but this ain't about me. This is about Sharonda. And she's over here with this, you know, lucrative business, as a matter of fact. Um, she's been in business since 2012. 12 years is not a bad run for any business, I don't feel like. Clearly, she was successful, you know, in a city that doesn't seem very... um. Full of wealth, necessarily, for the 52% of the people that is Black. I would like to know who is the prestige over there in the community. You know, the, the Black leaders and things over there in Baton Rouge. I don't know. Um, Ms. Sharonda is not running just a sex shop, though. She has a whole sexual resource center. She offers education classes. She has workshops going on over there. She's the only Black-owned sex shop over in Louisiana, in Baton Rouge anyway. And I mean, I'm sure there's more sex shops around there, you know. It's the funny thing about being um, so tightly wound up in religion, whatever it is, whatever it is, it always has this very strong push and pull towards sex. I feel like people that weren't so tightly, tightly wound in that in that um, religious upbringing where you can't really be free to be sexual. It leans way into the opposite direction. So it's over here just being either Jesus or sex shop and things. That's quite a dilemma to find yourself in. That's all I'm saying. It seems like a struggle. It seems like a struggle I wouldn't want to be in. But anyway... That's where uh, Ms. Sharonda is over here with her sexual resource center. It's the whole vibe. Sharonda describes Baton Rouge as fairly small and not progressive. So, and based on what they were showing us, because, you know, they give us a little visual of the small houses. And I mean, I guess it seems pretty similar to what you think most Southern towns, you know, that are largely populated by Black folks would look like. I think it looks like that a lot here, too, depending on where you go. She said religion runs everything over there. Religion runs politics, schools, households, families, marriages. 
I mean, it can't be easy to live in such a judgmental environment when you're not actually doing anything wrong. Um, she talks about, you know, over there being raised at this Southern Belle who, you know, you don't talk about sex. You don't think about it. You don't have any types of discussions about sex. You just keep your head. You just don't have any sex. But then you're supposed to get married and know what to do. And then, you know, she said when she got with her husband, the first time they got intimate, she um, was afraid to take her shirt off. And, you know, because there's no exploring. And then at the same time, like you're raising these young girls to just go get a husband and be, you know, W-I-F-E. And we know how I feel about that. Servitude and things. Now, over here at the sex shop, she says her best running uh, product right now is the rose. And I've been hearing a lot about the rose. And she said the rose could give you an orgasm in 30 seconds. And I was like, wow, that's a lot. And that's fast, I suppose. I don't know. Like, I mean, if you think about it. Like, where you need, what are you rushing for, for 30 seconds? Where are you at with your rose? Like, if you're like at home, I feel like you don't need to, you know, run it into 30 seconds. My goodness. Do you got a pot on the stove or something? She said um, she got into the industry to supplement her income as a teacher because we know how, you know, the system, <laughs> whatever the system is, uh, they don't give a shit about teachers. And I would imagine in black communities, especially because they don't want you to learn nothing. That's where it started. Remember, don't read books. Feels like they're trying to take the books away. <sighs> I'm so stressed out about this whole, um, you know, political situation that we found ourselves in. And, and the first time in my life, I get this damn old to be sitting here worried about what the is happening with our government. Anyway, the teacher needed some money. So she went to a sex party. I mean, a sex toy party. And she was like, shoot, I can do this. Make some money over here doing that. So she got her little sex party starter kit. And she started throwing parties at the house. And she put one of those magnets on the side of her car that said, I throw those types of parties. Apparently, there's a, quite an interest in it. Because within three years, she um she had to get her own spot. Her husband was like, it's too much going on. Oh, yeah, she has a whole husband. Remember, she got married and was afraid to take her shirt off. But anyway, yeah, her husband was like, it's too much. You're going to have to find a spot. And um, finding a spot is not always easy because nobody wants to have that type of business in their, you know, establishments, their plazas and things. And I get it because on one hand, you know, I don't have nothing against it. But on the other hand, it does attract a certain type of individual. And I don't mean, you know, sexual individual. I mean, like sometimes weirdos be acting weird. I mean, clearly she made it happen. Um, she incorporated workshops in her business. Um, she wanted to help educate the people, you know. We're being safe out here. So her story is very interesting. She said back in the 80s, her father was openly gay and he contracted HIV, which then turned into AIDS. And back in the 80s, people were um, very much afraid of AIDS. And it was definitely something that was pushed completely solely on the gay community. And now he's down here in, you know, in this very religious South and all that. So, you know, it attached her to the whole idea of educating people. If you're going to be out here being sex then you better be out here being safe. And the crazy thing is that people, and I'm not even, you know, I'm not trying to pick on people or anything like that. So don't go get it all in your feelings. But people that are very much deeply rooted in, you know, religion, it's the way it is up here. I always sneaking around trying to do weird shit because, you know, they're being deprived of things. Not everybody, but, you know, people. She said the community felt like this was his punishment. I mean, that's a very backwards way of thinking. Unfortunately, that's the way it was. Hopefully it's changed a little bit. I mean, I guess at least now we know it ain't just gay people. So everybody should be out here being careful. 
she's being judged in the community as a Jezebel and a whore and, you know, not a business owner and a wife and a mother, which is what she is, and a teacher. I wonder if that affected her. I mean, I probably she probably had to um, quit teaching because, you know, they probably were like, not around my kids. All these perfect people walking around doing weird shit behind closed doors, judging other folks. Somebody keeping her in business. Quite a few of y'all around there in that small town that she, you know, small place. Y'all be hitting her up and down to the car, talking about what you got in there. <laughs> like crack. That shit is not cheap either. $150. Woo! For $150, I think I need more than 30 seconds. Sorry. Turn that thing down. In 2020, of course, her, her business was affected by the big C because people obviously were not leaving the house and were being more driven towards um, online shopping. I mean, wasn't that a dirty damn trick? Because now people, you know, just packages uh, every damn day. So Nico slides over to the barbershop to give us a little insight on Mr. Brian Darby. He's the owner of his and hers grooming bar. Brian is tightening up Nico's mustache and he talks about um, feeling like a minister behind the chair and his mother was a minister. And I know, I mean, I don't be feeling like no minister, but you definitely feel like some type of therapist. Um, he's also an exotic dancer. He and another one went over to one of these parties that was a sex toy party that ended up, you know, cleaning up later. He said, he said him and some friends were cleaning up around there. And then he was in the kitchen, like, you know, getting his moves on and stuff. And I was like, you know what you should do? You should probably go ahead and be an exotic dancer. So he got booked for a couple few things. And then when he got booked for a couple few things, then somebody introduced him to Sharonda and then she kept him booked and busy. So he'd be barbering in the morning time and in the evening time, he'd be bumping and grinding. Mm -hmm. Now, Brian says he's not judged as harshly as Sharonda because, because he's a man and he's supposed to be sexual. How does that work anyway? Sharonda gets her guide over here at the Ministry of Love. She found a space where she can be, you know, welcomed into, you know, her own religious space, because that's what she was raised on. So, you know, girl, you got to find a place like where your morals and values are, you know, not judged. You're supposed to, ain't that what you're supposed to be doing? Something about a neck, cast it out and bringing everything on in there. But, you know, don't ask me, because I don't be over there in the book rules. Who is the pastor over there? Dr. British, Dr. Bridget Stieb. I'm not sure how you say her name, but she's the pastor at the Ministry of Love and she welcomes Sharonda in. She had her own drama. I guess at some point the pastor had caught her house on fire and I'm not sure what was going on with that, but the people said she caught her house on fire. She said the candles you know, caught the house on fire. Either way, it got worked out legally. And Sharonda was like, this is my church. A lot of people left. I did not let, you know, let the legal, you know, justice system figure that part out. I came over here for, you know, praise and worship. Unfortunately, I guess after, you know, trying to revive her brick and mortar after the big C, She was not able to do that. Um, also, after being married for 23 years, she is no longer married. I would say probably has nothing to do with her lifestyle because they were married for 23 years. I think, you know, people, you know, she got married when she was 18. So there's that. She says she's in her um, season of change. I feel, you know. That stage of change is hard. And I think sometimes best done, um, not necessarily by yourself, but by yourself. If you know, you know. Now she's going to have one last workshop. They're going to focus on oral sex training, um, how to squirt, and writing. That's their last class. The house is packed. Everybody's here for it. 
Nico is a pretty amazing assistant. I'm going to go ahead and give Nico some shouts out for doing a great job at assisting Sharonda in her last class. I don't think Sharonda seems like the nasty lady. I think she seems like um, the nice lady and the smart lady and maybe the naked lady because she do be naked. Um, Sharonda said her God has her. And, and, and yeah, her God has her. And I feel like as long as she knows that, she's good. I'm sure it was so emotional to let go of her, her store that she had for 12 years. And um, so that was the story of, you know, Sharonda down here and bringing the, the space between sex and God all, all way together. Good luck to her. I don't think she's going to have no problems moving on to the next thing. Anyway, next week we gonna be um we're gonna be gay in Dallas. That should be fun. Um until then, let's go ahead, like the video, subscribe to my channel, and yeah, down in the valley where the girls good night. Bye y'all.